Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this is going to be a pretty short episode where I want to show you how to take advantage of portable applications. Uh, portable applications are ones that don't need to be installed on a system-by-system -system basis but that can run self-contained from a folder on, say, your USB flash drive. And there's a bunch of free portable uh, software for Windows and some for the Mac and uh, links to a list of them will be included in the show notes. Now you may ask, why why would I need these uh, kinds of portable applications? Uh, now let me tell you, if you are in a work environment like like I am, and you you don't have the rights to install anything on on the machine that Avid is running on, which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I you know I wouldn't want it any other way because otherwise there'd be a bunch of crap on the on the machines. So you can install stuff, but but uh, you still you still need some software. Like, for example, an image editing software, because uh, like on the machines that I work on, the uh, image editing software of choice is Microsoft Paint, which is a pain in the ass to use. So it's great to have something like the GIMP, which is a free open source uh, portable um, ed graphics editing software. It doesn't look as nice, uh, you know, the UI design will... Uh, is not is not so great, but but it does uh, the trick. You know, you can uh, resize an image and, and do stuff with the levels. You know, all the stuff that you usually do in in a photo editing application when you're in an editing suite. And it's it's installing it is very simple. You just download the program and uh, unzip it and put it on your USB stick just like that. Uh, I have it here under Apps and GIMP Portable. And then you just launch the program, and it takes quite a long time to launch, and I don't know whether that is because it's portable or it's it's just like that, that it's slow to start. But, um, you know, ta it takes some time. Give it that time, and, and it will just work fine. Another uh, program that I use uh, all the time, actually even more than the, the GIMP, is Songbird, which is, uh, as you can see, uh, an iTunes clone. No, it's not a clone. It's got the play button on the bottom of the screen, not on top, so it's totally different from iTunes. But, you know, there's some familiarity. If you're if you're familiar with, with iTunes, you should be good to go. And that is a, a great thing because I carry uh, a lot of music and, and sound effects on, on the USB stick. And it would be a pain to just uh, search through it, uh, you, like here in Finder or in Explorer on Windows, and you know not be being able to quickly listen to it. So uh, I'll just use Songbird. It you know has a database of all the songs that I have on the USB stick and all the sound effects, and I can just search for stuff like like for example a door and. It finds everything with door in it. Can quickly listen to it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for, of course. <laughs> so uh, then you just hit show file, right click and say show file. And it highlights the file and you can just drag and drop it into Avid. So that is incredibly handy, and I, you know, I, I couldn't live without it because how many times uh, is it that you're in the editing suite and and you're just uh, thinking, wow, the music that this guy has brought is, is horrible, and you know, now you can just quickly <laughs> use your own <laughs> if that's okay with your client. <clears throat> anyway, and a third program that I, you know, have downloaded but actually not used really, is uh, index your files, which is basically a search tool. It looks horrible, but it works very, very well. What you do is you build an index, test, and hit browse, and then say what kind of uh, thing this program should be indexing. So I'll, for the sake of this argument, I'll just index all the sounds, say okay, Then you hit say start index, and it does it pretty quickly. Indexes the names of them, and then you can quickly search for them. 
So let's search for the door again. And finds all the files containing the word door. And you can just play it. Or uh, just drag and drop it uh, to, to your editing application again. So I think this is pretty cool. Now there's a, a huge uh, amount of portable applications for Windows. There's some for the Mac. I'm not sure whether all of these uh, applications are available portably for the Mac. Uh, I, I fear they're not. So uh, I'm sorry if you're, if you're a Mac user as I am. Uh, and, and also, you know, your editing environment is on a, on a Mac. And I'm very, very sorry, but on the Mac you could probably just simply use iTunes that might be installed on it. So, <laughs> so if you have any other portable applications that you use and that you can't live without as an editor, just drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com. So thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast, even though it was not very specific and could actually be called General Editing Application Screencast. Uh, but anyway... If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com. And again, if you have any comments or suggestions, mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter if it's not over capacity and you have the fail whale at twitter.com slash avidscreencast or visit my Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash avidscreencast. If you'd like to know what kind of stuff I do professionally, check out editguy.de. Again, thank you very much for watching. See you next week. Goodbye.